so today we are going to look at the MXR drum computer from 19 Arcti Dry. That's right, FX Legends MXR made a drum machine in the 1980s. I say a drum machine because this was the only model they made, although confusingly they did market the British made MPC drum products uh, in the US, not to be confused with the Akai MPC series that came later. Now this machine has 12 sounds and as is customary for this channel, I will now review them for you with my face. So you can hear that it is a digital drum machine, very much in the vein of the Lindrum and Oberheim DMX. Uh, and the sounds are stored on EEPROMs, which was really expensive at the time, which is why you have so few sounds, why on the whole they're really short, uh, and why they use much lower sample rates and bit depths than we do nowadays. I don't know what the sample rate of this machine is, but the bit depth is 8-bit, and that then gives it a crunchy, punchy sound that we all know and love. Now programming is as you would expect, tap away against a click with the appropriate quantized value and everything is lined up for you. Now here's a problem, you can't change patterns on the fly. You have to stop, change the pattern and start again, which is pretty annoying. So instead, all of that stuff is dealt with in song mode where it's pretty easy to just chain together patterns and add in and delete, etc. So this drum machine came out in 1983, the same year that MIDI came out, but it doesn't have MIDI. However, the man, the myth, the legend that is Harry Axton has actually designed a MIDI kit for this unit. And this is his unit. Thank you for the loan, Harry. Uh, and it's the one that he used to develop the MIDI kit. So now you can do, well, this sort of thing with it. The next problem is that whilst there is tuning on this unit, it is a global tuning which affects all of the sounds together. And another problem is that the tuning range is really small. Now compare that to say an Oberheim DX. And as well as only having global tuning and a limited range, when you compare it to other products that came out the same year, like the sequential drum tracks, you see that things were far more advanced. Not only is there a full range and individual tuning, but you can actually sequence the tuning as part of your pattern. Now, having been a little bit rude about this unit thus far, I will say that something that's great about it is that it has a full complement of individual outs, so we can process all the sounds with a bunch of different effects, including a sister MXR effects processor.
Now, the MXR drum computer was not a successful product, and as such, they didn't make that many of them. And in fact, a year after they put this out, MXR went out of business, although the brand was then later acquired by Jim Dunlop, who still use it to this day. But the original MXR guys went on to other things, and Keith Barr of MXR founded Alesis. And here's the funny thing, because in the mid-80s, they put out the HR16, which was a very successful drum machine. And in 1990, they put out the SR16, which is still being made today, which means it's quite possibly the best-selling drum machine of all time. I don't know for sure, but surely if it's been in production for that long. So I guess the lesson is, uh, if at first you don't succeed, maybe make another drum machine. Now, Alex, have you done one of those sample packs? Yes, I have. And here it is playing from my Isla S2400. Where do I get that sample pack? Well, you get that sample pack and all the other sample packs I make, the music from my videos and the stems of the music from my videos from my Patreon. So if you want that stuff and you want to help me continue making videos, please consider that. Otherwise, huge thank you to Harry Axton for lending me his unit and thank you to you for watching. <laughs> Thank you.